Hi. Good afternoon. My name is Manuel Navarro Catalan, and I'm currently a graduate student in the electrical engineering department at RPI. And today I'll be talking to you about Modelica and the Modelica Standard Library. So out of this presentation, I want to introduce the Modelica language, introduce the Modelica Standard Library, introduce uh, Modelica and Python ties and the APIs, and then show you a real life example of an open source Modelica library and some of its applications. So as far as the goals go, I want to spread information about Modelica. I want to showcase some ongoing source, uh, open source projects that are going on within the Modelica community. And I want to introduce some students uh, of a new way of modeling um, in, in general. So as far as the agenda goes, I want to go over what Modelica is, give you an overview of the library, some of the IDs and tools that exist for it, um, the Python API, an, uh, an ID, uh, a concept of continuous integration with Modelica, and finally show you the open IPSL library as an example. And finally, give you some access to resources. So what is Modelica? Modelica is a free cost standardized open source modeling language uh, that was developed and owned by the association. This association has more than 300 members uh, and it has active development through the Modelica Design Group. Um, so this, the Modelica language is open object-oriented, a-causal, equation-based, and uh, supports multi-domain modeling. So it can be thermal, electrical, mechanical, et cetera. Um, so you can think of it as an object-oriented engineering modeling language, which is, which is good. So the idea of a physical equation modeling means that every single um, component icon represents a physical component. So for example, in this model, we see that here, this represents uh, a, a motor that uh, here it has gears, the motor, and every single icon is its own component. Each line represents a different physical coupling, whether it's wire, heat, uh, fluid flow, etc. cetera. And the component, each component, for example, here is uh, made up of uh, the equations. So each icon is a component and each component is made out of equations. Um, so what's so modern? So this means that it is a causal. That means that it does not based on signal flow. And then we, that means that we can keep the physical structure how it is in the real world. So for example, here is very easy to decipher what's going on. It's a circuit, it's an AC circuit with resistors, two resistors in parallel, a capacitor and an inductor, right? That are grounded. But compared to, for example, block oriental mod oriented modeling, which is very common uh, here in the engineering school, uh, a Simulink, we have say, we have to develop the the equations, I'm sorry, the the, the model in a way to adapt to signal flow. So that means that this same model becomes not very intuitive, very hard to understand. It's really hard to see which one's an inductor, which one's a capacitor. And furthermore, we have to develop uh, these kind of transfer equations to go inside the capacitor that make it to add it a different level of abstraction and harder for it to understand, for the user to understand. So this is why it's so important. So when we see a big model, for example, here uh, between Modelica and Simulink, we see here that we see exactly what's going on. Right off the bat, we know that these two are motors, this is a gear, there's a resistor, and there's a controller, right? Each element has its own compact features and equations, and the way the models are laid out, it really is how it's laid out in the real world. It's very intuitive. However, in Simulink, the user must derive transfer functions and equations and make sure that the signals are flowing the right way. And this causes more space for, this creates more space for errors. And the model's not really intuitive enough or no real life. And it adds a different level of abstraction where the user really has to, a normal engineer cannot really be doing this. They have to have, the learning curve is a lot higher. So this is very important and it's very good to be able to move forward into this more, um, objective way of doing things. So a big thing within the with Modelica is it comes every single package comes from with the Modelica standard library. So the Modelica standard libraries, think of it like a one-stop shop for modeling with Modelica. And so here's some facts. It's open source, uh, com both commercial and open source tools use it. Uh, it has continuous releases. It was first released since 1998 and it has around 1,200 
200 models and 910 functions. And here we, we can see it. So as, you, as soon as you fire up a Modelica IDE or a tool, you'll, you'll definitely see the Modelica standard library. And if really, you can start uh, doing any kind of modeling with it. So for example, it comes with a mechanics package which includes multi-body and ro rotational translational. So multi-body refers to joint bodies, forces, and sensors, while rotational and translational uh, talks about drivetrains, gears, and clutches. And all of these have different elements that where you can model all of these things. So kind of like carcasses that you can start changing parameters to adapt it to your needs. So the electrical package has analog uh, devices such as resistors, capacitors, transformers, transistors, switches, sources, or sensors. While the digital part has basic logic blocks like AND, OR, etc., delays, gates, even sources. And it also has machines such as DC machines and synchronous and asynchronous machines, which this is important because we can start, uh, in, my in, in the case of my research, uh, power system research, we can start modeling through here. Um, we also have the flu fluid package which deals with compressible and com incompressible media. And it also has different types of elements, just pipe, valves, pumps, sensors, tanks, etc. It also has a media package which contains different gases, gas mixture, materials, etc., air, and then a block package with which uh, if you've ever taken a control systems course, you, you'll be very familiar with input output blocks, PID controllers, transfer functions, et cetera, which we go back to simulink. So if there's something that you can only do in simulink, you can put it in a transfer function here and it'll still work. Uh, the thermal package where it's very simple, uh, simple thermal um, modeling, such as pipe flow, cooling with air or water. And there's also lump. There is heat transfer with heat capacitor, thermal conductors, body radiations, and sources, et cetera. Um, there's also the math utilities package, where, which has standard math functions, such as addition, subtraction, and division. And it also has things like the linear algebra, which is very useful when you're working with these models. There's also this utilities package that deals more with file operations and uh, system operations, printing, exporting, which is also useful for your model eventually. So with like a standard library, you're able to model pretty much any type System, and more importantly, you're able to model multi-domain systems, which these are crucial for engineering problems. We know that nothing is just one dimension. For example, a switch in an electrical line, like the ones that you see overhead is the switch, and then whenever it's switched on or off, then we see a change in current. So that's the electrical part. But there's also a whole mechanical and thermal dimension that you, we need to be able to take into account. So whenever you open the switch, how what material should it be made out of so that the kickback uh, and the material is strong enough? Uh, what about when you open it and that split second before you open it, is it going to get too hot or 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 what's the spacing between it? So this makes uh, so some examples, for example, multi-domain would be electrical and mechanical components, uh, mechanical and thermal, thermal and electrical, electrical and logical, and multi-domain model models really create more and reliable models. This makes models, real world models, things that you see in the real world, you are able to put it on the computer and vice versa. Of course, the, the point of modeling is to be able to make it as close to real life as possible. So of course, this puts us a step, further, a step closer to that. Next, I want to talk a bit about IDEs and Modelica tools. So the Modelica is, the Modelica is a language open source uh, with a standard library, but also we have uh, open source uh, libraries and uh, tools such as Open Modelica, which is a tool with a GUI and it's supported by the OSMC, uh, which has continuous releases and anyone can use for free. Or there's also Daimola, which is proprietary and it even has its own um, libraries and it's a Modelica tool with a GUI and it was developed by Dynasty Maybe. So you can think about these kind of like Eclipse or NetBeans, which uh, are many things, for example, for you to programming one thing, but many different ideas for you to be able to program. Uh, but you can pick and choose, and these are the main ones. There's also proprietary libraries, proprietary uh, solvers that you can, you can also purchase from, from different companies. So just to give you a more clear uh, overview of what it is, so Daimola's main features is that it integrates modeling analysis, simulation, the result evaluation. So this GUI is important because it gives you things that users are familiar with, menus, drop-down menus, icon, dialog boxes, and these are not easily found in other modeling software. So the idea uh, oriented graphical modeling comes within Daimola because now you're able to drag and drop. And for example, you see a 
a, a capacitor here, a resistor here, an inductor here, and you're able to drag and drop and connect them just like you would if you were doing it on a breadboard, which makes it really intuitive. But at the same time, you can go into the text view, much as of, of like a programming language and change parameters, change functions, change that. And this makes it really, really powerful and really easy for 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 a uh, for a beginner to use, I'm very good for, for an expert to use because they're able to change it a lot more. Um, so then there's two different modes. Kind of think about it like in the breadboard here when in, in the modeling part where you're plugging everything together, setting parameters, and also in the simulation part where you're seeing your results, seeing all the signals that happen and how they happened. Uh, this is a closer view of the simulation uh, mode window. And what's the modeling workflow? So in the modeling block, you will be able to build models, use the libraries, uh, drag and drop things, and create the model's aesthetic. Then you go to the text view to change any kind of equations and parameters that you want. And then you go to the simulation mode, where you'll be able to optimize the model, change the simulation settings, and run various different scenarios. In the end, you go to the post-processing mode, and then you view the results, uh, plot signals, and even ex I'm sorry, and even explore results. And Repeat this until you get the best result. Of course, there's further analysis tools such as later analysis, sensitivity analysis, and calibration and optimization to help us better the models and further improve our modeling. Also, these tools such as Open Malik and Daimola have had have created Python APIs in order for us to be able to run multiple models, change the model, change simulation settings, export results, plot results, and really optimize our our simulations in order to be able to be more efficient with we, with, with with our modeling, to not be able to clicking around and be able to see what you, you can get, right? So a sample script, for example, will import a library. Uh, we will open the Dimola and open up Dimola. Then we would create a list with different, in this case, it's machines and the path of the machines on the different parameters that we're interested in. Then we select the working directory, our simulation parameters and our simulation time. Then we simulate it, then we check if it was successful or not. And then we export our .mat file into a .csv file where we're able to better use statistical analysis tools. And this makes it really open up a whole world of possibilities. For example, we can start looking into continuous integration using uh, Travis CI and Docker, where we pray in, Travis, in, in GitHub, then with Travis CI, we boot it up, and within through a Docker container, uh, we review the pull request, we build the code on the repository, and then with these Python APIs, we can create a model check script and some unit tests. In this case, they're power system uh, uh, unit tests, uh, for example, fault test. And then we check the result, and, and we notify and the user, and we're able to see if we should uh, merge a pull request. Uh, so a sample CI implementation is we see that we boot up the, uh, Travis CI, the server, and then we pull the Docker image from Docker Hub. And then here, this runs a model check. So in this library, it's checking exciters, machine models, turbine models, power system stabilizer models. And in the end, it tells you whether you can merge it or not, which is very powerful and very useful as things grow and, and as libraries and projects within Modelica develop. So lastly, I want to talk about a, uh, a library that we are actually developing here at our RP, which is the OpenIPSL library. So this is one of the bigger projects using Modelica, Python API, and the continuous integration. Um, and it's an open source power systems that we have verified against proprietary software that the power system industry uses. And this really enables us to have model exchange. Uh, we have a formal mathematical description of models because many times these companies don't disclose the actual elements of the models. And also it separates the models from an IDE or, or a tool. Many times they sell you the, the IDE, but you're only able to use it there. But with Maleka, you can pick and choose and really pair with different applications and really make your model all that better and all that optimized. As you can see, we can model things like turbine, wind turbines, and where we can see the actual model and we can. And other small networks, for example, this one that is a small machine with two, with uh, with a three uh, transmission line to the grid and a small fault. And we see what happens at the fault, a three phase fault at time one, and what happens to the voltage and what happens to the reactive power. And we have access to all of them. 
And of course, we have many more application uh, examples. For example, the IEEE 9 bus, IEEE 14 bus, uh, even the Nordic 44, which talks about all of the Nordic uh, countries' um, transmission system. And all of these are actually uh, some of like things like the Klein Kunder to area machine system. If you take a, a course here at RPI, you will not see it on a book, but now we're able to see it even further with Modelica. So this is real life power engineering that we are able to do. And furthermore, OpenIPSL is stored in a GitHub repository for uh, version control. And we check it as we talked about with, uh, with, um, with Travis EI and Docker, which makes it really anyone to collaborate and really for us to be able to move forward, both in improving modeling and also improving with the tools that we have available from the computer science and and and, uh, and programming tools that many times engineers don't really bother to look at. So some other resources uh, I, I want to leave here, but Modeca really allows us to take modeling into the next step. Stop looking at it with the limitations that we had before with uh, other tools. But to be able to really idolize a variety of tools and really make it more open source for us to be able to have more real life models that are better suited for today's world and, and for today's problems. Thank you very much.